do we do? We'll be right back. Good evening, everybody. We just got off the uh, confirmation class via Zoom, and it was it was wonderful seeing most of the students. And you can see Abigail dancing behind me in the reflection right here. <laughs> you got to have fun in this time. It's kind of a crazy time. So we got, we're having fun. We're connecting. We found a, um, it's not the same, and uh, it won't be, but it's something. And I'm grateful for something right now. So let us, let us do our evening prayer and let's go rest tonight so that we can rise up tomorrow to new life in Christ Jesus. Luther's evening prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously kept them this night. Keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe have no power over me. Amen. I hope you were able to get on to our recording from last week of our Holden Evening Prayer. It's so sad to not be together for that. Um, yeah, I'm just, those are the moments that are the hardest for me hearing the sanctuary fill with the song and the candlelight and the silence and it's just so calming to me so there is that recording on our both our youtube channel our church website and our facebook it's recorded from last week so i hope you would take some time to listen to those and hear that the magnificat of how god our souls magnify god's promise for us So we'll um, continue with our, we miss that. I hope you can continue watching that and also the encountering Jesus through their voice, own voices of Nicodemus tonight as well. And kind of wrestle with those questions of the th authorities and, and what is enough as we care for our Lord. So I, for Compline tonight, let's continue with that. It is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. For our hymn tonight, I hope I'm gonna share another song that I found um, in the group I'm part of, like on the page, Facebook page with. It's My Lighthouse. Yeah. And they're a cute little family too. So. Seen it in my doubt, in my failures, oh, oh, God. You're the friend of him, me, me, through. You are peace in my troubles, you are hope. You are peace in my troubles,
I hope that all came through. Um, I'm still learning here myself, but it's my lighthouse and I'll not fear the darkness and you'll see me safe to the other shore. What a good message for us tonight in this time of not knowing where the other shore even is right now, to let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some are known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First Peter 5. Humble yourselves under God's mighty hand, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on the one who cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist the devil, steadfast in your faith. Well, into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit to help me resist that devil and not be devoured and keep me steadfast in this word of faith. And God has promised to do that for us. Because God has redeemed me and you, O oh Lord, God of truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepare in the sight of all people. A light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let's continue with our Sabbath practice, as then we'll finish up with Compline. So our Sabbath practice tonight from our book by Wayne Mueller is Breaking the Trance. I thought that was rather helpful. Um, there's a quote by Annie Dillard that says, we are most deeply asleep at the switch when we fancy we control any switches at all. We sleep to times hurdy-gurdy, we wake, if we ever wake to the silence of God. So um, this chapter talks about how we are seduced by the illusion of film, like going to the movies, it talks about, which I know we're, none of us are doing that outside right now. We're watching a lot of Netflix and Disney and I don't know what else is out there. Amazon Prime, Hulu, those are the main ones, right? Um, but when, we, when we're in that video, we're like, we get seduced by the image there. It actually is part of um, Plato's allegory of the cave of Coricos, where it's an illusion of life and life's actually happening behind us, even though we're watching the shadow of life in front of us. But we talk, um, slowly as we watch a movie, we surrender even our emotions to the illusion and enter into the world of the characters on the screen. And faster and faster we laugh and we weep and we actually are present and part of that world that we're watching. We become enraptured in the place in which they live. Um, and then bam, suddenly the film breaks and the lights come on. It's very disorienting at first. We do not know where we are or what is happening. Slowly we remember that we're in a theater. We remember that we came here in a car. We just had dinner, that our life is not on the screen after all. The images, the people were an illusion. Slowly our life comes pouring back into ourselves. Those are good movies when we can do that, isn't it? <laughs> I always love that. Um, I think the most um, 
telling one for me was when I watched Schindler's List. And I mean, it's all black and white, except for that, that girl in pink. And I think there was another, a little bit of color later on. And I remember walking out on this sunny day and it felt like the world was darker for a while. I've had those, have you ever had those experiences where it feels like after an experience, the world just is different. I think 9-11 was the same for me after that all. I mean, it just felt like walking around the street was different. Life was different for a while. Um, I think we're in another one of those times right now, which is why I wanted to talk about breaking the trance in this chapter today. We are seduced into a trance, a pleasant illusion, one to which we willingly submit ourselves whenever we enter the movie theater, television program, or good novel. But when the trance is broken, it takes a while to let go of the truth of the life in which, into which we have been completely surrendered. In the same way, we can, over time, become enthralled in the trance of our work. It is all important. It must be done right away. If it doesn't get done without me, it cannot stop it or it can, will fall apart. It is all up to me. Terrible things will happen if I do not get this done. I have to keep working because I have things to buy and there are bills to pay with all those things. I have to buy faster computers and more expensive telephones to help me get more done so I can keep up and make money to pay the bills up for the things I need to buy to help me get things done. And it's just this cycle. Once we're in this trance, our author says, there never seems to be a good reason to stop. The wisdom of Sabbath time is that at the prescribed moment, it is time to stop. We cannot wait until we are finished because we're never finished. We cannot wait until we have everything we need because the mind is seduced by endlessly multiplying desires. We cannot wait until things slow down because the world is moving faster and faster and we cannot be left behind. Even right now when things are slowing down and we're not going to work and meetings, we're filling the time up. We are, um, how, what to give your kids, what to do this, what, how to work more efficient, efficiently at home, how to connect with people. We are filling it with the machine of work. Um, and those who are reporting to work, I know that your days are full of a lot of things right now too. And you also are having trouble finding a time to rest. So this relates to all of us right now. There are always a million good reasons to keep on going and never a good enough reason to stop. In Chinese medicine, the first step to treatment is to break the old pattern. And when we can do that, it, um, he goes on, only when I am relaxed and what that happens much less than I'd like to, does compassion flow more easily from me to myself and others. Then I can view people not in terms of what they can do for me and my local community becomes a garden of people and places. I develop an interest in the people I've never seen before. Maybe I strike up a conversation with the woman at the dry cleaners, or today I went to get groceries um, as I was coming back after closing the office today, and I talked to the person in the, the grocery line. I mean, we were a good a distance apart, but had a conversation, took the time. When we stop and we break that pattern, we stop seeing people solely for their function and start seeing their value. One of the astonishing attributes of Sabbath time is its unflinching uselessness. Nothing will get done. Not a single item will be checked off any list. Nothing of significance will be accomplished. No goal realized. It is thoroughly without measurable value. That makes me kind of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a to-do list person. But the beauty of this type of thing and not feeling guilty about just a day of or an hour of nothing. I had that the other day. I, I just laid in the hammock for like two hours and it was glorious. And I don't remember the last time I did that for no other reason than there was sunshine and there was a hammock and why not? And it was amazing. Many of us are reluctant to slow our pace because we feel a driving need to be useful. During the week, our work, during the week, our work, our contributions to the well-being of our family and community are essential and necessary. But Sabbath time offers the gift of deep balance. 
In Sabbath time, we are valued not for what we have done or accomplished, but simply because we have received the gentle blessing of being miraculously alive. These are the useless things that grow in time to walk without purpose, to no place in particular, where we are astonished by a textured bark of the oak, to notice the color red showing itself for the first time in the maple in the fall, or those buds on the trees right now, taking the time to notice which trees are waking up and which ones aren't yet to wake up to see animals in the shapes of clouds, to walk in clover, to fall into an unexpected conversation, to find something delicious and unbidden take shape, to taste the orange we eat, the juice on the chin, the pulp between teeth, to take a deep sigh and exhale, followed by a listening silence, to allow a recollection of the moment with a loved one, of the feeling of how our life has evolved, to give thanks for the single step upon the earth, to give thanks for any blessing previously unnoticed, the gentle brush of the hand of a lover's body, the sweet surrender of sleep in the afternoon. At one retreat, there was a woman, a potter. She had been having difficulty with her pots. She would center her clay and then keep bringing it out, out to the edge and then push to its limit, it would co collapse. Over and over, she would center it again, raise it, bring it to its furthest edge, and it would collapse. Eventually, she would tire of this challenge of pushing the clay to the edge and reluctantly surrender to the fact that she needed to keep the clay closer to the center. As she spoke of it, in this quiet room filled with Sabbath pilgrims, she recognized something she had missed. She realized that she was not the potter. She was the clay. She had been brought again and again to her edge only to collapse. The invitation was clear, to live her life close to the center. Properly centered, the clay would hold. We are a people of Christ who is our center, who calls us back and brings us back to center by God's word for us. That's what these times are. These times are centering moments because the world is just crazy right now. And there's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of things that will push us to our limits. And I'm sure you've hit your limit many times today. I know I have in little, little moments, just the hardness of going to the grocery store. That was hard for me today of closing the office and, and not knowing when we'll necessarily be back there. Um, other than we are answering, picking up phone messages and all that stuff. Don't worry if you need us. Um, look at that more work, but I'm here for you. That's why I'm your pastor. Um, of like Palm Sunday, getting the, the palms came today. And we won't wave them in the sanctuary this year. We won't be in there for Easter. But the resurrection comes. And Christ centers us. Christ brings us back to that word that gives us life and hope and peace and keeps us going even when we're apart. And I miss you all. And I'm glad for you. I'm glad for the ability to share these devotions with you and, and the fact that God is bigger than all that we're facing right now. And that God will center us and bring us home to that place of peace in him. His love for us. He is our lighthouse guiding the way forward right now. And therefore, we don't have to be afraid of knowing the way because Christ is the way for us. So our prayers tonight, let's continue with Compline. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness, I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest securely for you are our help and you neither slumber nor sleep. You are our lighthouse guiding us forward, Lord. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now in peace I will lie down and sleep. You alone, O Lord, make me secure. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace this night. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.